Good morning and welcome to worship wherever you may be. Once again, we have had to suspend our in-person worship because of the spread of COVID, but we're glad that you are joining us online because we're still all one family, regardless of where we happen to be sitting at the moment. I just want to bring a couple of announcements to your attention. Yesterday, we had a very successful blood drive. We collected 44 units. So thank you to all who donated, and thank you to Carol's team who made it all happen. We are already signing up for the next blood drive in January. So if you want to sign up, you can contact Carol Drayton, and she will get you on the list. You will notice we have an extra friend over here this morning, our nutcracker. We are getting ready for the season of Advent. Yes, it is almost upon us. And this season of Advent, our theme is going to be the gift of the nutcracker. You will be getting some information in your mail, your post office mail, this week. So watch for that and be ready to join us in a couple of weeks as we begin our Advent study. Now let's turn our hearts and minds to the worship of the Lord.
Let me invite the children to come to the front of the room. Since you can't be here with me and sitting on the little circles, you can be in the front of the room. Now, this is a time of year that I usually really, really like because it's about a week after Halloween, and usually I would still be eating my Halloween candy, but I bet you probably didn't get as much this year, did you? It wasn't, wasn't quite the same trick-or-treating. But I brought some candy today. I brought a bag of M&Ms, and on this bag of M&Ms, it says sharing size. Now, I think they mean that it's big enough to, for more than one person to eat from, but I want to talk about another way to share M&Ms. I'm going to pour some in the bowl here, if it's going to open for me. <clears throat> We have lots of colors of M&Ms, don't we? And we can share the story of Jesus with our friends using M&Ms. Now, sometimes I have talk, trouble talking to my friends about Jesus. This helps me. So first we find one, oh, this is kind of a dark color. And it reminds us that everybody has done something that God didn't like. The big word for that is sin. And this reminds us that we have all sinned and we need to find ways to apologize to God. Then we have blue. Blue reminds us that God created the heavens and the earth and all the, the water and when we see a picture of the earth, like you seem taken from space, it looks very blue, doesn't it? The blue also reminds us of the water of our baptism. When God said, I love you, and I know everything about you, even your name, even though there's billions of people on the earth, I know everything about you, and I love you. Yellow reminds us of the sun that God created, as well as reminding us that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus was the light because he helped us see God and understand what God wanted. Just like turning on the light in your room when it's dark, you can see a lot better and know what's there. Jesus is the light of the world showing us God. The red ones, whoops, that one went down there. The red ones are a little bit sadder. They remind us of Jesus' blood when he died on the cross. But they're also kind of happy because Jesus died because he loved us and wanted us to be right with God. The green ones, well, green is a symbol of life, just like you have your evergreen tree at Christmas time. The green ones remind us that Jesus, after he was crucified, rose again. He came back to life, and he's offering us everlasting life with him in heaven. And there's one color left orange. Orange, you glad that God loves you. So I want you to see if you can remember all of these colors. You may have to come back and watch this again, but then I want you to tell somebody about sharing Jesus with your M&Ms. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for the many ways that we have to tell our friends about the love of Jesus. Amen.
Please stand as you're able to join me in the call to worship. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing, Sing praises to the glory of God's name. Make, Make glorious his praise. All the earth worships you and, and sings praises, praises to your name. Our opening hymn is the Church's One Foundation, number 545. remain standing and join me in the affirmation of faith from the Korean Methodist Church. We believe in one, the creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. 
We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn for a call to prayer is This Is My Song, verse 1 of number 437. Join me in our unison prayer. 
Glorious God, you are the Lord of resurrection power. You raised your son Jesus from death to live and rule at the right hand of your heavenly throne. We rejoice that you uphold the universe and yet you treasure every person's life. Send your spirit to shine your light so we will recognize your great hope for the world. Empower our church to work together to help make your reign visible in people's lives. We pray in his name, amen. Let us be in a time of silent prayer. Almighty God, we come before you with joy and celebration. What a beautiful week you have given to us. The weather has been gorgeous. The trees are in full color. And we cannot help but see your hand at work in every little thing around us. Forgive us when we forget to give you thanks for the miracle of creation, for the wonder of your presence in our lives, for the hope that comes to us through the resurrected Christ. Lord, we have come through an election that has divided our country. We ask your wisdom to be with all of those who have been elected. Your grace to be with those who were not elected. And your love and your mercy to be with all of us as we seek to work together for the good of our country and for the glory of your kingdom. We pray, Lord, for those who are feeling so isolated during this pandemic. How wrong we were when we thought it would be a couple of weeks and we would see each other again. Bless all who seek your presence, all who need to know that they are not alone that you are with them. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for all of our first responders, for our military personnel, for our firefighters, our police officers, our ambulance crews, for the doctors and the nurses and the caregivers who are working tirelessly to keep us well. Grant them strength, wisdom, and comfort, assuring them that they are doing exactly what you have called them to do. We offer these in all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, and the, and the glory, glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
by praying, lead us not into temptation, takes a whole new meaning when there's a bowl of M&Ms sitting right behind you. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke 18. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we stand before your word, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It's a stereotypical image. The child following mom around the house, going, Mommy, 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 Mommy. What that child needs at that moment may seem insignificant to an adult, but the child is persistent until she is satisfied her request is heard. Luke begins this passage by telling us what it's about. It's about the need to pray and not lose heart. And even knowing this, this is a really difficult parable to deal with. It's about a woman who has some kind of legal action against someone else, and she doesn't feel she is being fairly heard by the judge. She continually shows up, maybe even at his house, but she shows up in the court every time she sees him, she is just annoying the heck out of him. Judge, 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 judge. After a period of time, the judge grants her a, ju a judgment just to get rid of her. The judge feels that he doesn't have to answer to anybody, not God or any other people. He doesn't give the justice, the judgment to the woman because it is justice. He gives it because that way she'll stop annoying him. Does this parable mean that as long as we keep annoying God, we, we will eventually get what we think we need? I really don't think that's the point that Jesus is trying to make here. This is a parable Luke told us about the need for prayer and for hope. Jesus, I think, wanted to emphasize the need for consistent, ongoing prayer. Not just prayers at worship, not just grace before meals. Prayer is a constant, ongoing conversation with God. It's not bugging God for what we think we want. 
It's lifting up our needs and the needs of others. By lifting up needs and injustices that we see, we also learn to listen to God's voice and God's instruction for us. There's one thing that's easy to overlook in this parable as we struggle with this idea of annoying God with our prayers. Jesus said that the woman was demanding justice. This is not a request for money, although money might have been involved. It's a request for justice. It's a request to make things right. Jesus uses this example that justice ultimately will be done even when there's those who try to stand in the way of it. Jesus also said that this is an example of how God will ultimately bring justice to all people. Justice is a topic that has been in the news a lot over the last year or so. Families are calling for justice when a loved one is injured or killed by a police officer. Voices in education are calling for justice in the form of resources for children who have to learn remotely. Economic leaders are calling for justice for those who have lost their income due to the pandemic. If Jesus is promising justice, well, what exactly does that mean? I looked up the word justice in an online dictionary, and it said that justice is righteousness, equitableness, or moral rightness. Justice doesn't mean that everyone gets the same thing. That's equality. Justice means that everyone gets what they need. I saw a great visual example of justice recently. There were three people standing behind a fence, wanting to look over the fence and watch the ball game. Only one of them was tall enough to actually see over the fence. And there were three apple crates that they could stand on. When each of them stood on one crate, there was still only one, and maybe the second if she tiptoed, that could see over the fence. But when the middle-sized person was given one crate, and the shorter person was given two crates, and the taller person was given no crates, everyone could see the game. There wasn't equality. Everybody didn't get the same thing. Everybody got what they needed. That's justice. This parable of Jesus is about more than just simply prayer. It's about praying for justice. Justice in our lives. Justice in our world. Where do we see in our world, or even in our own community, the need for justice? Where are there places that people are not getting what they need? We've just completed a very contentious election, and I'm very sure it's not over yet. There were people for whatever reason, who didn't think they were going to be able to get to the polls on November 3rd to vote in person. So there was a lot of discussion 
about mail-in ballots and early voting. And while, yes, there needs to be vigilance to make sure everyone only gets one vote, there's also the need for justice to make sure that everyone gets their vote, even if they are unable to get to the polls on November 3rd. Some communities organized rides for early voting for those unable to get to the polls on their own. Other cities placed boxes around town for the collection of mail-in ballots. This is justice doing the best we can to see that every person gets what they need, even if it means somebody gets more or favored treatment than someone else. Where else is there a need for justice in this world? There's no shortage of answers to that question. It's not a rhetorical question. We are called by God as the people of God to actively seek justice for those in need of justice. Yes, that does mean praying about an injustice that we see. But it means more than that. It means acting in whatever way we can to resolve that injustice. It means keeping our hearts open as we pray so that we can hear God, so that God will speak to us to show us the injustice and to show us how we can address it. On our prayer beads this week, our bead is green for intercession. Intercession, as it relates to prayer, means praying for the needs of others. We pray for our friends and our family when they are ill. That's intercession. We pray for friends and family when they are celebrating something wonderful. That's intercession. But there is more to intercession than praying for our friends. Intercession also means praying for the injustices that are present in the world. It means having our eyes open, our spiritual eyes open, so that we can see injustice when it presents itself. It means praying for justice for others even when we don't know who those others are. It means asking God to show us what we can do to bring justice into the world. Intercession through prayer is more than just hoping that the injustice that we are praying about will be made right. When we regularly and actively intercede in prayer for others, it opens our hearts, it opens our eyes to the injustices in the world. It opens our hearts and our ears to hear God's voice and instruction. It gives us the strength of spirit to go out and do what God wants us to do. God relies on us to be the hands and feet of justice in the world. When we see injustice, when we intercede in prayer, that is the first step to making a difference in the world. Injustice will not go away overnight. The prophets preached about injustice centuries before Jesus was born. 
Amos told us to let justice roll down like waters and a righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Micah asked, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? We are called to do justice. Like the child trailing around the house saying, Mommy, 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 we are called to intercede for our world, to intercede in prayer, calling, Lord, Lord, Lord. When we intercede for others, we are also calling to God for strength and wisdom for ourselves so that we will make a difference in the world. It's not a matter of annoying God until we get what we want. It's a matter of justice. God desires justice for all of God's children. In all things, at all times. And God is relying on us to make justice happen. Let's not let God down. Amen. Our closing hymn is entitled, Whatever You Do. Oh, oh, oh.
go in the peace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, praying for justice to be done and working to make it happen. Amen. Thank you.